I wondered if you could just uh, give me an example of a computational machine because I'm thinking clocks and weather vanes and that's clearly not <laughs> what you mean. Um, you presented us with the dichotomy there of transhumanism and transcendentalism and uh, you were saying though that the successful religions you cite Mormonism uh, which has embraced <coughs> transhumanism and you seem to have dismissed the um, <coughs> traditional religions, orthodoxy. Um, I think particularly of perhaps the Hasidic Jews and such like, um, as, as not being successful and not because not having embraced and utilised transhumanistic endeavours. But in fact, that's not absolutely the case. I'm familiar with the the Hasidic Jewish population of Gateshead, for example, um, where they take things on their terms um, and use them. For example, the, um, the families that are known there have um, genome charts on their walls because they're looking at who marries whom so as not to um, propagate any of the uh, genetic diseases that they know are within the Ashkenazi Jewish groups that, that they intermarry with before the people are the decisions. So it's not quite as absolute as you say. And I wonder if you have a particular reason for dismissing the traditional religions as being a possibility for the future. Um, I know myself <laughs> well and truly in the trans humanist trend, but I'm interested in this. But I have two questions, one uh, one for Bruce one for Eden. Uh, for Bruce, um, when you speak about the change uh, in the human nature in the, in the uh, past two, three, seven years, uh, you are mostly talking about the change of uh, experience, science, knowledge, morale, uh, physical condition, etc. But to me, it's just the <coughs> layer, not here, but layer on the top of the human nature. The human nature still is based on like uh, some common and, and deep, uh, deeply rooted cravings for food, safety, sociality, and so what is changing that? Is this changing in, in any way? So, um, and, and the other thing, uh, the other question is to Igor, is um, uh, when, I, when, I, when I speak about the information machines and the set of rules, I don't mean the, the rules especially like, uh, for mathematics, it's just the variability of, of those machines. So my point is that it's still limit, limited by, by the, um, uh, by, by the uh, creation of, of, of the engineer who, who makes them. No matter how they, they are complicated, even if they can uh, produce some uh, unpredicted responses, you still can make two machines uh, which are completely similar, completely the same. And, they, and the, um, uh, uh, the permutations of their answers will be limited. However, uh, there is a problem in there because if the creator thinks that he can cover the whole range of um, human uh, responses, human needs, human thoughts, human um, um, individualities, it's very, very dangerous because then it goes back uh, to uh, the transhumanism because they will think uh, we will control everything, we will make everybody happy, we will cover uh, everybody's happiness by the set of rules, set of genetic modifications, set of Whatever, but but it will uh, it will make um, the whole humankind poorer because it will cut off the, the, the branches which have not been foreseen by those engineers, and so um, that, that's how I look at it. In the beginning, you said that uh, we're trying to abolish uh, pain and suffering, but are we really uh, trying to do that, or is this a selective, um, depending on culture, politics, and the economy? Uh, to add to what I think what Bruce said about human nature, perhaps falling out of it, um, it had not many examples of what aspects of human nature there are. Um, if you look at uh, uh, Donald Brown's book called Human Universals, you'll find about a couple of hundred different aspects of human nature. Um, I think what, what, we, what most people mean by human nature is what anthropologists find in all cultures. And there are many more than a few we've made today. i uh, just give you a couple of examples. Um, in all cultures, people deal more favorably with their kin than their non-kin. In all cultures, they 
code has got it. Um, and one more thing to say is that these aspects of nature are not fixed. I think it's something Bruce already alluded to, that they're not just constants and fixed and genetically determined. They are contingent. Um, they respond to the costs and benefits of action. So, for example, how much you benefit your kin over your long kin will depend on a variety of circumstantial environmental things like the costs and benefits of these things. So they're qualities, um, but the important part of human nature is that we we deal with these qualities in quantitatively adaptive ways. I, I still haven't had an explanation as to why it's incoherent to want to be a non-religious communitarian. The second is, of course we are inconsistent about some things, but I think it's possible to believe in um, some tinkering, let's say, to eradicate diseases while still being worried about enhancement. And I think that drinking coffee or doing some things temporarily is not the same as permanent enhancement. So I think they're two different things. Um, and the third point really is about the elite argument. I mean, yes, of course, people who think of themselves at the top won't like the idea of people coming up behind, but the argument is precisely about that, that they will therefore prevent the poor from trying to join them, and that is why people are worried about the tiered society. But it depends where you see yourselves on the ladder. And I don't think of myself as the elite, so I'd be you know, tempted to take a pill to join what I see as the elite, but I still have worries about it. And that was what I was asking, why? Because I'm not religious. But Bruce, uh, you say that you can't see the transhumanism uh, movement uh, gaining ground, but uh, it seems to me that it, 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 in a way it already has. It just depends on how closely you, uh, you, you really think about these enhancements. I'm carrying one in my pocket right now, although it's switched off, which allows me to communicate with people all over the world. It just doesn't happen to be embedded in my skin. Um, really, is this not just a question of proximity? In that sense, um, you know, these enhancements have, have, have been taken up universally, mobile phones, for example. Um, other things may, may also be considered to be enhancements, such as teaching of advanced concepts or ways of thinking, or possibly even sort of brain software, which might be modified with cognitive behavioral therapy or something like that. Um, so I, I would say that um, the, the reason that transhumanism hasn't gone any further than that is because the products aren't there at the moment. I can't currently refresh all the cells in my body with some kind of special laser gene therapy, whatever. Um, but if I could, then people might take it up, even people who are religious. I was wondering where you would put, um, where you would put new religious movements which seem to emphasize this world rather than transcendental beliefs. And things like um, Scientology very much emphasizing success in this world rather than sort of seeking some kind of um, nirvana or some kind of uh, heaven. So the, it seems to me to be somewhere in between that they use the resources of this world and they don't have the transcendental element. And I, I, you seem to be saying that with the Mormons really because they seem to be wanting earthly success as much as spiritual salvation. I'm just interested in, in the sort of uh, anti-democratic implications, what I see as anti-democratic implications of not just this, you know, the, the, the sort of discussion here, but also the discussion in the last panel. Because if, if science is determining the way our lives are, are unfolding, uh, we have very little uh, ability to impact upon that, except, of course, scientists uh, do have that ability. And it, it, it points to a sort of um, anti, yes, anti-democratic, elitist way of actually administering things. And uh, I, for one, find that slightly disturbing. I also would say that it's, it's, um, it's necessary to think of, of these modes of scientific thought in historical terms. So, for instance, people were very certain around the turn of the last century that social Darwinism uh, was the way forward. And yet, at this stage, uh, we throw out social Darwinism, and I, I do think with, with specific scientific uh, uh, concepts and ways of thinking about particular uh, issues, especially social issues, uh, that these can come and go very quickly. And I would say that a lot of the, the, uh, the way that we've heard the whole thing discussed might be historically determined rather than a sort of uh, uh, out, outlook of, of science.